All right, lads, today we're taking a look at the 2S25M, the modernized Sprut. This is actually based on a BMD4 chassis with the same engine used in the BMP3. This means compared to the original Sprut, we actually have slightly worse mobility as the tank is a little bit heavier and I believe its reverse gearing is also lower as well. But in this case, the Lord have taketh, but he has also given off, if that's a word, I don't know. Anyway, this modernized Sprut gets incredibly high resolution thermal images, as well as a very powerful main round. We essentially have the same firepower as the top tier Soviet main battle tanks at a very low battery rating of 10.0, which means the Sprut M fits very nicely into the incredibly overpowered 10.0 Soviet lineup, where you have vehicles such as the T-72 AV Terms, the 2S-38, the soon-to-be uh, T-80UD, the BMP-2M, and a plethora of other vehicles. So it's safe to say that the 2S25M sits very nicely into this top tier lineup. The Sprut itself comes in the 7th rank of the Soviet tech tree, sitting again at battery rating 10.0. In the tech tree, it comes just after the BMP3 and the original Sprut, meaning that the 2S25M is an end of the line vehicle. This means it is going to be a bit hard to spade the vehicle, as you will have to grind out additional RP. Spading the Sprut isn't too bad, however. While we do get a stock heater fest round, which is a little bit of a pain in the balls, we do get the 3BM42 Mango round in the first rank of the modifications. I then also recommend getting the NVDs after the 3BM42, and then making your way down, getting the laser rangefinder, and going all the way down to the 3BM60. I wouldn't focus on getting the missile, as it is largely useless, and because the mobility of this Sprut isn't really its major selling point at this battery rating at least, I would prioritize getting the firepower before you go down the engine line. It's also worth pointing out that this tank does get better spawn points for aeroplanes if you scout vehicles, and it does have a third gen thermal scout UAV, allowing you to assist your friendlies on the battlefield. It's also worth pointing out that the Sprut M also has a wide array of camouflages that are typically found on the Soviet main battle tanks. We also have two camouflages available on the Gaijin Marketplace. One is a winter camouflage which consists of white and green colours and the other is this desert camouflage which kind of has a black accent on the side and kind of looks like a VDV style camo scheme for some reason. So with the fantastic firepower but the fairly average levels of mobility and basically no survivability, is it worth investing in the Soviet light tank tree? Or should you just flop out your wallet and purchase the 2S38? Well, if you'd like to know more about this tank and what I think about it, continue watching the video. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. And welcome back lads. We're going to start as always by looking at the engine and mobility before we move on to the survivability and ending on the firepower. So this tank's engine produces 500 horsepower. Combined with a weight of 18 tons, it gives us a power to weight ratio of 27.8 horsepower per ton, which is actually very good for this battle rating. But I don't know why, I don't know whether it's like the map terrain, but I never really feel like this tank is very fast. It's kind of like a lot of tanks like the Challengers or some of the heavier main battle tanks. It still feels very sluggish to drive around for some reason. Because of that, the mobility isn't really something that you can use to your strength to be honest while you may be slightly faster than a lot of the vehicles around you you're about the same speed as like a leopard 2a4 so you can't really get to a position at the start of a match before a main battle tank to be honest it's not like you can rush at the start of a match really this is definitely more of a ambush predator so to speak kind of like the m1128 in the american tech tree the striker it isn't really a light tank that you can use to exploit a position you kind of have to get somewhere and then just be an ambush predator kind of. The top speed though of 71 kilometers per hour is good in theory, you never really get to that, and the reverse speed of 21 kilometers per hour as well is very refreshing considering that most of the T-72s around this battle rating have like 4 kilometers per hour, so actually being able to reverse or retreat, however you choose to see it, is very nice indeed. -y. If we do get spotted though, we do have 6 smoke grenades, these fire two at a time, giving you a total of three pops of smoke. If we do take a round though, the chances of us surviving isn't really that high. Just like every Soviet main battle tank, we have an ammunition carousel located beneath the turret, 
as well as a gun and commander in the turret and a driver in the hull of the vehicle. This ammo rack is obviously a bad thing because it can just kill you in a single hit, but considering that your armor is sheet metal, as we'll see shortly, enemies aren't exactly going to be having to aim for weak spots against this tank. From the side aspect, the crew are quite spaced out, but obviously only having a crew of three men, a shot to the turret is probably going to kill both turret members, so you are going to be dying quite a lot in this vehicle. Obviously, don't take any more than 23 rounds into a battle. This means that all the ammunition stored like on the side of the upper bit of the hull isn't there. You'll only have ammunition in the ammo carousel, which I guess does minimize your chance of exploding. But we take a quick look at the armor of this tank. A thickest part of the lower frontal plate is around 40 millimeters thick. The upper frontal plate is only 18 millimeters thick. And crucially, it is angled at 73 degrees. Now, most high PS sable, high tier sable rounds, sorry, they will bounce basically anything over 78 degrees. So with the slope of this being only 73, you aren't even going to be like a BMP one or two where you can occasionally bounce some incoming sable rounds. Every single shot that is fired at you, if it comes from a main battle tank, is going to penetrate your armor really. You're not going to get any of those lucky bounces that you get in some other light tanks. So against armor piercing rounds fired by a 50 cal, at point blank range you can be penetrated, mainly the lower frontal plate. If we step things up a little bit though and go to the 25mm rounds fired by several NATO IFVs, at a range of 200 meters, you are basically easily penetrated everywhere. As I said, this tank isn't going to be used as a rushing or an aggressive tank. It's more of a get at the back of a map, use your great optics and gun, and snipe people from long range. And luckily for us, we do have the 125mm 2A75 cannon. I'm not really too sure about what the 2A75 is. I assume it has a little bit bigger breach and it can take higher pressure main gun rounds. It is upgraded, I do read, I'm not really sure how they upgraded it. This tank can carry 40 rounds into battle, but as I said, you have a first stage ammunition ready rack of 22, so don't take any more than 23 into a battle to avoid those ammunition concentrations in the upper part of the hull. Unfortunately, this tank does use the T-72 style of autoloader, meaning our reload rate of 7.1 seconds is a little bit slow, but it's not too bad as long as you don't try and play this tank pretty aggressively. What is bad though, especially for a light tank which is going to be going in between hills and trying to use the terrain to your advantage, is the 5 degrees of gun depression. It kind of limits your ability to push out, you can't really sit on top of a ridgeline and risk being fired back at, so it does limit your ability to use some of the more good sniping spots in War Thunder, but it is still workable on a lot of maps in War Thunder. Moving on to the turret rotation speed, we have a maximum speed of 35 degrees per second with an ace crew, which is fairly fast. But the biggest killer of this vehicle, and it's the same for a lot of Soviet and Chinese tanks, is the vertical targeting speed. It can only move at 3.5 degrees per second. This means if you like go over a hill too quickly, or someone is slightly above or below you, it takes ages to get this gun onto target. Because of this, and a combination of other factors that I've mentioned so far, you can't really use this tank to be aggressive, you just can't get this gun on target quickly. You need to stay at medium to long range and put your fantastic main gun rounds to work. Speaking of which, this tank can carry five different types of ammunition into a battle. We've already covered that when you come stock, we have a heat of fest round. It's a free BK-18M. It's pretty decent, it's nothing fantastic. You can also take the 30F26, around 46mm of penetration I believe. It is enough to overpressure the roof of the Abrams if you know where to aim, but it's not really reliable, especially considering that you cannot take basically any incoming, any incoming hit yourself. Luckily though, in the first rank of the modifications, we do have that 3BM42 Mango. Very, very good round, even at battle rate in 10.0. But especially for us, we do also get the 3BM60. This is the main gun round fired by the T90M and the T80 BVM. And considering this tank is battery rating 10.0, it gives it probably the best gun in the game, maybe apart from the Object 292 in term, well, rank for rank the best gun in the game, as you have a very high power round, as well as a pretty decent reload. It's not as slow as the Object 292, with basically the same amount of power. The Gunner Sight has a standard 4x zoom and an optional 12 times zoom, and the 2S25M does also get a Commander's Independent Optic, which also has a base 4x and an optional 12x zoom. Both the gunner and commander sites have 3rd gen thermal images, which does make target acquisition very, very good. 
you basically have the exact same thing of the T-72AV terms, basically in a tier 10 light tank. In real life, that's not the case. They use obviously different optical systems, but basically see this tank as a T-72AV terms, gun handling and main gun with a better round, but just on a lighter, faster chassis, I guess. So lads, is it worth grinding out the Sprout? Well, let's just say that there's a reason that Gaijin had to give this tank free the M60. It's incredibly map dependent, with most of the newer maps in War Thunder being basically just city maps where there's no real verticality, it's just go around a corner and hope you get the shot off first. Tanks like this are very, very, how do we say, they're not the best, they're incredibly vulnerable to pretty much everything on the battlefield from SPAs all the way up to main battle tanks. While this tank does have a fantastic main gun, it doesn't have any type of survivability whatsoever. It basically means that this tank is only as good as the person playing it. You can't get any lucky hits whatsoever. I'm not going to say that this is a bad tank. Compared to pretty much every main battle tank in the Soviet tech tree, like the T-72 Objects 1989 or whatever it's called, the 1989 modification, the Sprut is leaps and bounds ahead of this thing in terms of gun handling and thermals and that sort of stuff. If Gaijin actually took the time to make some very good maps with lots of like slopes and hills, or they just made the map rotation go back to like old realistic battles where you had those super big maps, I think people would generally enjoy playing a lot of tanks like the, like tanks like the Challenger 2s where they don't particularly have the best performance in tight claustrophobic maps, but on wide open maps with their great thermals and high power guns, they can still be used despite not being as good as the other top tier main battle tanks. Anyway lads, I would recommend people grind out the Sprot. It's a fantastic backup. The battle rating 10.0 Soviet lineup is insanely good and it's made better by the addition of this tank. As I said, if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing and consider becoming a channel member. Just like Lola Alphonse, Tans, Doboa Alex, Dr. Bob, Tomster013, RS28 Sama, Shlunty, Van Hala, Diogenes, Econ, Rodolfo Dizon, and Alan Hacker. Thank you lads for supporting the channel, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member by pressing the join button. Check out the Discord server where I frequently squad up with my members and friends, and don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks again for watching lads, and I'll see you in the next video.